out here <clears throat> with an admin, um, and you're a 55 now, is yes. that right? And you've been dealing with a long history of trouble with sleep, is that right? Yes. You've had loud snoring, yes. fatigue, yes. very sleepy throughout the day. Yes. And uh, you've, you've had prior sleep studies. Yes. They showed mild sleep apnea. Yes. But it shows that you're not really getting into deep sleep. Yes. And when you're not getting into deep sleep, it's leaving you feeling extremely fatigued. Every and day. Every day. And so we're thinking that maybe you actually have more, a, a more severe degree of sleep apnea. It's just that you're not able to fall asleep. So we were talking about the fact that uh, sleep apnea is a condition in which you go from light sleep to deep sleep. And as you go from light to deep sleep, all the muscles in your body relax. And there's muscles in the tongue and the throat. So as they relax, they can narrow. And when it narrows, you get snoring. And if it narrows a little bit more, it causes airway obstruction, and it can cause hypopneas. If it closes even more, you can get apneas. But there's a condition known as upper airway resistance syndrome, in which as soon as the throat begins to close, you wake up, you have an arousal. And the studies show that you're having arousals, I think, up to 29 times per hour, which means that once every two minutes, your throat is closing up and you're waking up. Throat is closing and you're waking up. And it's not severe enough <clears throat> to show the oxygen loss that the insurance companies are asking for in order to push ahead your treatment. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take you for a procedure called a drug-induced sleep endoscopy. Okay. This is a procedure that's done in the operating room where we put you under sedation. We use medications to put you in a state of sleep. It's not real sleep, it's just a drug-induced state of sleep. Okay. And what it does is it allows us to see what would happen if you were able to get into those deeper stages of sleep in which all of your muscles are relaxed. Okay. And then sometimes we see that it's completely normal, and other times we see that no. As you go into deeper sleep, the muscles are closing up and you're choking, and then we'll actually be able to see those events in a very safe setting with the whole team so that we can demonstrate to the insurance companies and your other doctors that this is in fact a really medically serious problem that needs the attention that you deserve. Great. Okay? Okay. Um, do you have any questions about the procedure? Anything else that you wanted to share? No, I do not. Okay, very good.
So he just goes from 100 to 98 back. Who can let us know the lowest option in the bubble? Yes, sir. The collapse field up here. No oxygen loss. Happening here. He's so healthy that he doesn't bend the weight up. He can't out.
So it's no wonder that the oral appliance didn't work. And CPAP's not going to work either because CPAP is just going to run into that tunnel. There's no space, there's no airway for the CPAP to work. Still choking, so there's no air. What's it about to do? There's no space for it to grow. He's choking on those alive. Do you have a drop press, please? And a section, please? A section. Uh, Let's have a discussion. What do you guys think? <coughs> Pretty telling, huh? Edmund? Edmund? Right? Yeah, really. yeah, that's three questions. As is pretty impressive how easily and quickly he would be set. Um, I, just a regular amount of sedation. Um, can't imagine trying to sleep like this. Uh, taking deep breaths there was no about every 30 seconds that was going on. Um, you can see his stats go down dramatically and then come back up after he gets an arousal. So we think he'd be a great candidate for the MMA surgery based on the results of this. It's a very good study. It's really, really necessary for you.